Well, better the devil you know, they say, and there's a reason for that, because phrased another way, things can always get worse. And these days, if they can, they often will. Jack Dorsey was the uh, Rasputin-like CEO and founder of Twitter that has become the digital public square for a lot of political worlds, certainly in the United States, Canada, UK, Australia. Twitter's banned in China itself, but there are hundreds of Chinese agents on Twitter for the government, diplomats, military voices, all propagandizing against the West. That's allowed on Twitter, but Jack Dorsey banned Donald Trump, the sitting president of the United States. However bad Jack Dorsey was, though, it looks like it's getting worse. He is succeeded in his position by someone named Parag Agrawal. And you can see the changes already. Joining us now via Skype from Austin, Texas, is our friend Alan Bokhari, senior tech correspondent of Breitbart.com. Alan, great to see you again. It's hard to imagine saying, I long for the days of Jack Dorsey. He was the censor who suspended the New York Post's Twitter account when they broke the news in the 2020 election about Hunter Biden's laptop. It's hard to think he could be the better than a better and in a better and worse diptych. But he was, wasn't he? That's absolutely right. Now, I have a rule when uh, Silicon Valley CEOs are replaced. Uh, you know, however bad the previous CEO was, the replacement is almost certainly going to be worse. That's because, you know, the political climate in corporate America now is just so left wing that they're constantly moving to the left. And, you know, the replacement of a CEO is always an opportunity to find someone more woke, more radical, more extremist. And uh, this is what we're seeing now with the, uh, with the new CEO of Twitter. He's barely been in his position for a week and already we're seeing mass suspension, mass ban, you know, accounts with tens of thousands of followers, hundreds of thousands in some cases being taken down uh, willy nilly without even any explanation. Uh, so, you know, we, we're moving towards even more censorship on Twitter than we've seen in the past. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not just hate speech, which, of course, is a code for conservative speech. In the last week, two very surprising but very telling Twitter accounts have been nuked. And I, and I see this in your latest article, Breitbart.com, called Twitter Blacklists Account Providing Updates on Ghislaine Maxwell Trial. That's Jeffrey Epstein's procurer who helped him run his pedophile ring, Ghislaine Maxwell or Ghislaine, as some people pronounce it. Um, all it did was spread information about the trial. There, there was no, at least as far as I know, there was nothing nefarious about it. It was literally magnifying what was going on in that courtroom. Deleted. Another one called Nancy Pelosi Portfolio Tracker, which just, hey, here's what Nancy Pelosi is investing in. Public information in the public interest. Deleted. Deleted. That can't be a coincidence. It can't be. And, you know, the, the, both of those accounts have hundreds of thousands of followers. So whoever ran them, it took probably years of work, uh, you know, so certainly many, many hours of work into, uh, into building out those accounts. And then Twitter just takes it away overnight. Uh, but, yeah, those two accounts are interesting because, you know, it shows that um, on the one hand, they're not going to allow anyone to report on the wrongdoing of the elites who uh, isn't part of the elites themselves. So, you know, CNN is going to be allowed to report on the, uh, the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. But if you're a, uh, if you're a, you know, a ordinary person with a Twitter account, then it's going to be a lot more difficult for you. You might even get banned. And then you have the Nancy Pelosi portfolio tracker, which was a fantastic account. It drew attention to the fact that um, the, uh, the investments of Nancy Pelosi have been surprisingly successful over her, you know, long career in, uh, in Congress. Uh, the, uh, that, I remember that, that account tweeting that um, Nancy Pelosi must be the next Warren Buffett, given how successful her, invest her investments are. Obviously, the, uh, the underlying uh, theme here is there's, you know, some suspicion, at least, of insider trading mm -hmm. going on. And Pelosi has faced those allegations in the past. Uh, but, you know, that account has gone down to hundreds of thousands of followers. Uh, in the past week, we've seen like numerous right-wing accounts go down, various conservative bloggers and preparing a story. They've been taken down as well. So what I think is going on here is Twitter is deploying some sort of network analysis tool 
And uh, what network analysis is, is uh, I've, I've written about this at length in my book, Deleted on Tech Censorship. Uh, network analysis is analyzing who follows who on social media. So if you want to identify a political movement or a social movement or some group of like-minded people on a social network, you want to look at who's following who. And uh, social networks do this all the time to identify, for example, certain groups of consumers, like, you know, people who buy Nike sneakers or people who buy, you know, Apple products. Um, you know, they'll use network analysis to, to find out who those people are. But you can also determine who's, who are members of a particular uh, political movement using the same tool. And I think they've used that for shadow banning in the past, and they're now using that for, you know, full-scale permanent bans to ban an entire movement at once. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.